All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Once more, welcome to How to Master SQL DBA with TK. And as you already know, I'm TK. From my voice, you can tell I'm very excited, right? And if you're new to our page, this is our YouTube page where we post all our videos about SQL. Let's get into it because today's a very exciting day. So for today, we are going to be doing permissions, right? We are going to be doing both SQLs and AD accounts. Permissions, that is something that you would do at your job a lot. So that's why I'm very excited. So for just a recap, for last class, we restore our databases. That was a very interesting class. Please go back, check the video out. You will learn a lot, lot, lot. It's a very good video. All right. So without talking too much, let me show you what the developers want, right? So they have opened a ticket, right? And this is what they want for permission. They are like, they are like, okay, create an SQL login call adventure workers. So that, that's the name of the account one has to create i would you create the account on sql01 right hdc sql01 then we should give read and write permission to the login on all the adventure works databases right so it's very clear then also they were like make ent any account database owner on all the adventure work databases yes I know that I said that um, whenever you create a database, you should uh, make the database owner uh, uh, SA, but sometimes developers may request that you make a specific person an owner. Once they do that, you give that person the, uh, uh, the database owner permission. That is okay, but you only do that after they request it. Okay, with that being said, so let's copy this. So I'll copy this right here. Okay, and I'll take it to our SQL01 where I'll be performing the tax. All right, then let me open my Hyper-V and let's check. I have a V is running, so my SQL01 is running. Again, if yours is not running, you know what to do. You right click, you connect, and once you connect, you put in your credentials, right? For machine mine is running, I'll just go down here and I'll click on my HDC SQL01, then I'll open the notepad, just like that, and open, and I'm gonna paste the request in here. All righty, so I can see the request. Once I paste the request, I'm on the server, then now I'll click my SMS to connect to the instance, right? So now we are getting the difference between a server and an instance, right? And I keep repeating this every day, every single day. <laughs> okay. So let me connect to the SS to the SQL Server instance using the SMS. All right. So let me check the instance name. Yes, that is correct. So I'll just click connect. All righty, righty, right. So the first thing that we want to do is to create a SQL account. And if you remember correctly, when we're doing our installation, we said that we wanted mixed mode authentication, which means that we wanted users to log on this SQL instance, both through the Active Directory and through SQL. So the developers want us to create a SQL account called SA Adventure Worker, this one right here. So we can, let me copy this right here. Copy. All right. So how do you create that account? All you have to do first thing you go to where it says security. So on your left side, right? You click, then it expands. Then now you see where it says login. You know what to do, right? Right click, Microsoft product. Yeah, if you right click, then you go to where it says new login. You click on new logins. This now pops up right here. So this is where we do the magic right here. And let me just talk a little bit about the mode of authentication here, right? During the old versions of SQL, so from SQL 2019 downward, you only had the window authentication and the SQL authentication. So this is another interview question. What is new with SQL 2022 and above? They now have something called Microsoft Entra ID authentication. 
I've never used this. I don't know how it works, right? So let's just concentrate on what I know, right? I don't really know how this works. So but let's talk. Uh, uh, let's talk about what we use the most. So I'll talk about the window authentication and the SQL Server authentication. So the developer wants us to create a SQL Server authentication. So all we have to do, you click on SQL Server authentication. Once you click on that, you give it a name. Remember, they gave us a name. Just paste that name in there. It's called SA Adventure Workers. The next thing you want to do now is to give it a password, right? Let's use our famous password, right? America 2025. So it's called capital A, America 2025. Then you confirm the password in the bottom. Here you go. Ah. America 2025, right there. And then, yeah, it's very important. Very important, right? This is where it says the password and first policy. Uncheck that, and I'll tell you why, right? Once you create this password, right? I'm oh, sorry, once you create this login, you need to send this password to whoever requested this account to the developer, right? So, you are still a DBA. You are staying in control of everything that goes on on your SQL instance, right? You do not want to enforce this password, then allow the developer to change the password upon the first login, then you don't have access to that password no more because they are going to change it into something else. But remember, this is to your server. You still need to have access and control. So always send them the password. And once you send in the password, you keep it in a safe place just in case this developer leaves, right? Okay, yes, yeah, so just in case that developer leaves, a new developer comes in, they can still have access to this pass to the password and user account. Yes, you can always change the user user account, but it's, it's just better, right? For me, it's just better that way. So do not let them change the password. And also, do not let the password expire. Unless you have a company policy that they want you to renew their password like every six months, then you can allow it to expire. If not, do not enforce, do not enforce this policy. And then, so that's it. Username, password. The next thing you want to go is several. Very important. There is no reason that you should be giving sysadmin to anybody, right? Again, every company have different policy because remember that as a sysadmin, right, that user have access to the entire instance, including databases that have nothing to do with them. Because remember that sometimes you have multiple users, multiple developers doing different things on this on on this server so you want to give them access just to the database that they have access to but if you give them sysadmin permission right then they're gonna have control to other databases that have nothing to do if they really need sysadmin permission right what you can do or what i do in my environment is that i give what is called supervised sysadmin i'll give you a temporary sysadmin i'll supervise you do like an installation once you are done then i'm going to revoke that all right now let's click on user mapping very important so they want us to give access to all these databases all these adventure databases so adventure one two three four and the one 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 two three four five and they want us to give data writer and data reader so all we need to do right here is click on the first one then come down here you click on data reader and data writer then you come down here click on the second one they click again on data reader and data writer you click on the third one you click on data reader and data writer you do the same again they do data reader and data writer you do the same here you do data reader and data writer right and that should be good and these are the most common permission that you will give data reader and data writer right i know you can give this other permission like backup operator uh, all this but the most common trust me that you will give is going to be data read and data writer because where they can read and they can write they can see the data and they can update the data once you do that right what what i always do you already know i script it i can click okay if i click okay everything is going to just 
go smooth, but I like to script it. Once I script that out, I minimize this. This is everything is saying, so I, it's saying use master, create this database, and that is the password for the database, right? And then again, use master and create a user at the database level because this, this is the instance level. The first is the instance level. Then the second now is the database level. Then it, it's, it's going to auto and add the roles that I ask it to do. So if I click execute, this is what I want to see right here. Perfecto. Everything succeeded, right? And if I go here, I do a refresh and I expand. Now I have a login called AdventureWorks Workers, right? If I click here, I go to Properties, and I go to User Mapping. You see what I just did, right? This are all the databases that are connected to, and these are the rows. So everything looks good. So that is fine. Let me cancel this. Now let's do or the active directory because remember they gave us two requests right so we have done the first one the second request was to make eating tea ADS account database owner on all the adventure work databases so now we are going to give access to an ad account remember this one was a sql account that we created so how do we do it for ad accounts you ask why well, that's why we are here again same thing you go under Logins, Security Logins, right click, go to New Logins. Once this open up, you see here it says, what does it say? It says Window Authentication. Okay, now you go to Search. Because remember, ADIS accounts are created on the Active Directory, so we don't create them. We have to search them here, right? So let me put it in right here. Let me just put it in and search. I'll show you something. E Dean and I click on check name. Oh, uh -huh. you see, object could not be found. Hmm, what's going on? That is because, right, this server is not the active directory. You see, this is SQL01. How do I get it in then? I have to click on where it says location, then click on entire directory, click OK. And sometimes also, I come up here and I click on groups, right? Because it can be in a group, right? So always make sure you check on groups and users. Click OK. Now, if I say check name, you see, we found Eden, Eden T. You see that? All I have to do right now is to click OK. Once I click OK, that's Eden right there. Then now I go to server row. Again, I'm not going to give Eden sysadmin. No, 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 no. I'm just going to leave it at that. But if Eden, remember, Eden is a developer, so Eden doesn't need a sysadmin role. If Eden was a SQL ZBA, then they need sysadmin to control everything that goes on on the SQL server. I could have given Eden a sysadmin permission, but Eden is just a developer. He doesn't need that. So I go next way to say user mapping. And again, on all these databases, right, Adventure Works, I'm going to make Eden the database owner how do i do that i click on the first adventure works and i come down here it says db owner click on the second adventure works i click on where it says db owner do the same thing for the third one db owner the fourth one db owner and the fifth one db owner and that's it and then again i love to script it out oh no, let, me just, let me just click okay okay and that's it so now as you can see, this is Eden right here. Eden has been made the database owner of all those databases, which means that Eden can read, write, and even delete those databases, right? But that is just at the database level. He cannot control other databases that he doesn't have access to on the server. That is the difference. And also, sometimes they say that, or not, not that they say, Active Directory accounts are more secure because they are created on the Active Directory. Like you just saw, this SQL account right here that was scripted out is created on the SQL, which means that the account and password stay on the SQL. It means if somebody hacks this SQL instance, they can easily get this account and password, right? Unlike the Active Directory that is created on the domain, 
it's a little bit harder to hack the domain and steal the password and account so that is why if they ask you which one is more secure and why that is the reason why and this is how you create both your sql login and your on and your active directory login and also once you create this account do not forget to send the password to whoever request the account right so you can just make sure you write the password down do not forget the password right write it down then depend on depends on your company policy you might send the password through either secure email or just regular email and also you need to verify that this is working i forgot to mention that so now we have this account called sa adventure works let's verify that everything is working before we let the developer know that everything is good so copy that then you come right here and log in you see the i told you right that that's the connect click on that connect this opens up then you come right here that's that it says window authentication you do the drop down you go to sql because that's a sql account now right here it says sa adventure works right is that it right there i believe so so already there you paste it yes that's correct let me cancel make sure i have the right name in there yes and so remember write server name or write instance name then the sql authentication and that is the right login and now let's put in america for password 2025 and we click connect good it's working as you can see i'm logging here you see that as sa adventure works and if i go in there i'm logging as shilo t so everything is working everything is moving smoothly all right people we have accomplished our mission for today we can now go back to our developers and say hey you guys are now ready to hop and do your thing on the sql server right to start doing what you do all right everybody's happy the manager is happy and we can keep our jobs for at least two more months before they lay us off right i'm just playing i'm just playing all righty so what are we going to do for the next project wow this is a big one the big one big one big one we have a huge project coming up right so we have to create a windows cluster because we have to do always on so for the next project so this is all related this, this 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 they are all kind of related right here so we are going to be creating a windows cluster that we are going to use to create always on which means that in our environment they have asked us to create always on right they want us to connect the sql 01 and the sql 02 in an always on environment so that is what we are going to be doing so the first step is for us to create a windows cluster which is what we are going to be doing for our next project which is huge all right team i'll see you guys during the next project it's gonna be fun it's gonna be nice and stay blessed and bye-bye